So let's just spend a spend a few minutes, maybe just walk me up the casino during your solo and just talk about the climb. Um, I think maybe right before I jump into the casino, like the, my biggest fear with uh, soloing the casino was getting to the base of it. Um, I knew solo, I had like no doubts in my mind that climbing the casino was, you know, like, I just was like, that is going to work out fine for me, but I wasn't sure about approaching because of crevasses and I hemmed and hawed over my approach forever, which is ultimately why I ended up going with skis. Um, but I also thought it would be amazing to, uh, sort of be able to ski to the base of the casino, climb the casino with my skis on my back and in ski boots, and then be able to ski off Denali. And it just like, it seemed like the perfect route for it. Yeah. Uh, um, to be able to link all those things up that I love to do. And I had, that was my plan from when I started thinking about this back in 2015. So I ended up skiing down the Seattle ramp or the 1972 ramp, um, off the West rib, uh, which ultimately everything went quite okay doing that. I waited till the heat of the day, which has its own risks, um, in regards to falling in crevasses, but I also knew that the ski conditions would be good, um, and warm. So I did make it to the base of the casino, uh, without falling into any crevasses. Um, I waited till early morning, um, about 4 AM or 5 AM. I can't remember what time to start climbing, uh, the Japanese Kuar, which is basically the entrance to the casino Ridge. And I forget how long it is. Um, but it's, a lot of calf burning ice with a couple steep uh, steps that are maybe like 10 to 20 feet long in them, in, in the Kuar. Um, and some of it's kind of miserable climbing because I had all firm ice, very hard ice. And so it was just like calf burning. Um, but then once you get up into the bulk of the Kuar where it gets steeper, I, I found it to be just really fun um, ice climbing in good conditions. Uh, I was surprised by the amount of old fixed ropes and stuff melted into the black mm -hmm. ice that I'd never heard about. But um, And then once you get to the top of the Kuar, uh, you kind of exit onto this little bit of ridge and then you end up getting to the base of what's considered the crux pitch of uh the casino which i did not think was the crux pitch but um it's called like casino ledge pitch i believe and um in the guidebook maybe they rate it like five eight or five nine i don't remember but um it's sort of like a chimney um i was also kind of concerned about climbing it with skis because i wasn't sure if my skis would uh affect like the movement in this chimney but i ended up feeling super secure in this chimney. Um, I also didn't take, uh, any, any gear. Like I didn't climb with a rope or anything. I just was climbing it fully solo, free solo as they call it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I found that pitch, that crux pitch to be, um, quite fun, uh, and quite straightforward. And then, uh, fortunately, when you get up above that, you end up on this hanging glacier and it can be a lot of deep trail breaking. Um, there was already a track put in uh, by some friends who had climbed it a few days before. Um, and that made the going quite straightforward and uh, was I was able to save energy. Yeah. Um, getting up to the base of the first rock pitch. And there's also this this feature called the cowboy arete, which is like a very distinctive arete. Um, at this time, it was all deep snow. I think uh, it can oftentimes be blue ice and quite different. Yeah, and then you get up to the first rock band, and that's just, I, I kind of think like the first and second rock band are a bit more blue collar climbing. Um, and when I say that, I don't mean it how I would normally say blue collar climbing and that it can be like pretty bad quality rock. This is all really good quality rock. Um, it's all granite. It's solid. Um, but it's just kind of like, you know, you might climb like a difficult move and then 
move for a while and then climb another like more difficult move and it it's very inconsistent and after the first rock band you have another band of snow and then you get to the second rock band which is if my memory serves me right I believe where I thought the most difficult climbing was um never like it was always well within my ability but I was sort of just surprised by some of it um cuz I didn't expect it I thought it would be like all very straightforward mm. um but I remember making a couple moves that I was like wow that's that was pretty <laughs> tricky and then at the top which um after the fact I've talked to a couple people that maybe made the same mistake but I I didn't to uh have I didn't make the best route finding decisions and I ended up on some slab um which I found a couple moves of it to be kind of insecure and I wasn't really happy about being there but I was there so I just kind of had to commit to it and move forward and um and then after that it's the long snow slog uh up the south side and then to the Cassine Ridge proper and to the summit. <laughs> 